Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me join you in uh, thanking the organizers for setting up this uh, conference or this lunch debate and uh, also uh, thanking the EIF for, for its work in, in internet security. Uh, and again, thanks to you, you, um, because you now frightened the audience yeah, okay. with, with whatever, whatever, can happen, whatever can happen and what they can make wrong if they click on the wrong link or even if they don't click download something. So, I decided now to be the one to probably try to present some solutions. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. We are working on this jointly, of course. Um, as representative of Deutsche Telekom, um, we have more than about 200 million customers uh, around the world, especially in Europe, uh, that have mobile uh, lines with us, fixed line or broadband lines with us. And uh, therefore, the trust of our customers, trust in the digitized world, is uh, crucial for us. So uh, what I try to do today is uh, to elaborate on some ideas, some solutions, how we all jointly could elaborate on the trust of our customers, of our citizens, to make sure that the digitization of our daily life, of our world, is really being uh, fostered and uh, is really done secure, because I think nobody can and nobody will turn back digitization of our world. I will elaborate on, shortly, I promise, on eight different uh, topics and Again, very shortly, because I really like to have the, the discussion with you. So the first thing that has to happen as part of a solution, in my opinion, is to do the next step after the NIST Directive 1.0. There was great work done in the NIST Directive 1.0 back in 2013, it started, but now we have 2017 and uh, you know in cybersecurity and in internet uh, at least one year is uh, something like a dog year, so worse seven years or something like that. So there's been happening a lot of things uh, within those four years, so I think we really should discuss and, and talk about what should happen here as a next step. And uh, the main topic here would definitely be to include the entire value chain, all stakeholders in the security uh, domains and work and in the digital domains and work. Uh, because at the first step in the NIST Directive 1.0, you all know this, uh, there are somehow been excluded the hard and software providers, and I'm deeply convinced uh, we need them, and not only um, the ones that are working in critical infrastructure. The sep second topic is uh, I want to talk about is about the reporting and closing of vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities in hard and software, because those vulnerabilities are the main attack pattern for the criminals to attack you, your devices, your data, and your security. The third thing, probably something controversial for, for the discussion, is I want to mention the backdoor topic, backdoors for law enforcement agencies. Yeah, you all know that we have issues uh, with criminals talking in uh, an encrypted way, using encrypted means. But I'm not sure if creating backdoors and the right to uh, embed backdoors in hard and software is something we should do for law enforcement agencies, and I will come to back, the, uh, back to this uh, later on. The fourth thing, buzzword, keyword has already been mentioned, IoT and the IoT devices. Uh, this is something where I think we should definitely have some kind of certification for IoT devices and also product liability to make sure that the customers uh, that are using those IoT devices are in a way secured. Number five is, and also something we are doing here, the uh, ongoing cooperation uh, between public privacy, um, but also uh, between public and public uh, that is needed to tackle the challenges in cybersecurity because nobody can solve it alone in his own, well, let's say, silo or ghetto or however you want to name it. Next topic, uh, probably I can skip this because you already uh, elaborated on this a lot. It's about the education of people, yeah? not only the education of the uh, users, but uh, also, of course, uh, the education of IT security experts. Yeah? There's a huge lack of IT security experts outside in the market, and it's very difficult to find experts and to hire experts for the necessary work that has to be done. Uh, next thing is, Definitely, we have to have a broad societal dialogue on regulations and policies we are doing. Sometimes we tend to do something without discussing it uh, with the public, without discussing it with the stakeholders. And I think in a topic where trust and transparency is absolutely needed for the users, it's probably not the best idea to do it without a broad societal dialogue. So let me, for example, just name here the data retention, data retention directive that 
sometimes, at least in some countries, have been ha has been handled like this and uh, probably was not that, su that successful. And last but not least, also something you already touched on is about the security products. And what we definitely have and what we definitely need to do is to develop simple and easy solutions. Yeah. Referring to my parents, I'm quite sure they don't want to use any very difficult uh, things and, and software to encrypt their emails. They want to do it very easy and they don't want to play Angry Birds. They want to uh, receive... It's good. It's uh, well, good. definitely, but they rather want to receive pictures of their grandchilds. And so that's their use case. So probably we should work on that also. Okay, so digging into some of those topics a little bit deeper. The reporting and the closing of vulnerabilities is probably the, the most important topic. Um, we have it in the NIST directive uh, for well, in general for, gen for critical infrastructure, but I think we definitely needed also the reporting obligations towards IT security authorities for hard and software providers. Because those hard and software providers are the ones who see those weaknesses, those vulnerabilities in their products and services, and therefore there has to be an obligation that they have to close it. And talking about IoT and updating of software and hardware devices. I think we also should think about regulations in IoT. Regulations in IoT that create obligations for the um, providers of IoT devices to update their software. If you create an IoT device and put it in a parking lot uh, to measure if the parking lot is empty or not, and you put it there and make it part of the, uh, of the network, then there could be a huge issue if the software of this device has a vulnerability in it and you can't update it. So we definitely need update obligations for those IoT devices, probably at least for two years, uh, I don't know. Probably more can be regulated by the market, but there has to be something and there has to be the obligation to close those uh, weaknesses uh, also by the ones who are offering those services. In general, the product liability for IoT product devices could probably uh, done via the um, respective directive we already know for the product liability. So we could probably expand it to uh, IoT devices, to IoT manufacturers. That could be an idea. And also in that regard, it's about the certification and labeling. Because how do you want to make sure that IoT devices are secure and are being secured? I think on a mandatory basis, this is the only possibility to do it. If you do it voluntarily, you won't be successful at the end of the day. So what we need is a certificate or something like that that sets up, well, based of course on good practice, current understanding, sets up some kind of regulation in a sense of which requirements any, each and any IoT device has to fulfill to make it secure. Because at the end of the day, it's about security and trust, as I already mentioned. And an idea to probably do it could be to do something similar like we have for the uh, directives on uh, electromagnetic compatibility, radio equipment, low voltage. So everything that has a cord normally or uses power. Normally IoT devices are of the same kind, so therefore we could probably try to expand those regulations or um, do an additional one to really make sure that uh, we have a product liability uh, and some kind of certification for the IoT devices. I already mentioned cooperation, public-private partnerships. I think this is self-explaining and something I don't have to touch here. It is very important uh, if we try to um, implement the NIST Directive 1.0 to focus again on the sustainable implementation of the cybersecurity emergency response tool. Something that is not yet fulfilled, in my opinion, so far. What has to be done on the um, or as a consequence of the NIST Directive 1.0? And also the cooperation between public on the one hand and private on the other hand should rather be, at least from an industry perspective, uh, created like some kind of one-stop shop. For an industry uh, company, it's quite difficult nowadays to know who to talk to, who to report about incidents. So what we as an industry would really like to have is some kind of one-stop shop. I already touched the topic of law enforcement and uh, said Backdoors for law enforcement purposes uh, are something uh, I definitely don't want to have. And it's not due to the fact that I um, don't accept that there is a definite need to access encrypted communication of criminals. But what I definitely see is 
you are not able to limit such a backdoor to legitimate purposes. So if you say a law enforcement agency can break into an iPhone or something like that by creating a, well, let's say insecurity by default, then this can be used, of course, for appropriate purposes by the law enforcement agencies. But it definitely will also be used by criminals. There is no technical way to limit this. And therefore, at the point of time now, I don't see that backdoors in um, IT devices should be allowed because they will lead to a very, very huge uncertainty and insecurity regarding cyber. What you also can do on the law enforcement side is definitely um, support the law enforcement agencies by, again, educating their experts and having more and more experts in IT security in the law enforcement agencies. If they have the same issues like we in the industry, it's difficult to get the experts and to get the knowledge into the uh, authorities, so that's something where we also should work on the uh, common education. And of course, the internet, we just heard it, it's not a national thing. It's international, it's cross-border. And therefore, we have to support the law enforcement agencies that they get more and more possibilities to work cross-border. The cross-border collaboration of law enforcement agencies has definitely uh, to be made more, more easy and more convenient. Yeah? Because what we know nowadays, the so-called uh, judicial assistance is, as we all know, far too slow. So we need other means to make it much faster. I talked already about the education, so I will skip it here. So probably two last remarks on that. Um, we all, we all together have the responsibility to really work on the cyber mindset of the people. The cyber mindset means to do the cyber hygiene, like you just mentioned, to be aware of security issues but also on the other hand to give the customers, to give the users, to give the citizens clear transparency and sustainability of what is happening. So if there is a discussion about new rules, we shouldn't do it among our, let's say, policy experts. We definitely have to enlarge the discussion. We have to explain what we are doing and we have to explain what we want to the public because I'm deeply convinced if we want to have more cybersecurity, then we need some more regulations like I just uh, tried to describe. But we also need for sustainability the transparency towards, let's say, our users, the ones that are uh, affected by our policy, to make sure that they understand how important the topic of cybersecurity is and why we are doing things like we are doing them. Because people sometimes tend to say, well, for me it's difficult, I don't want to hear something about new regulation and I'm afraid that somebody is spying on me, I don't know exactly what's happening on my device. And if they are in a state like this, they will never give us the trust we need to make our digital world successful. And that is definitely what we have to do and so I'm happy to discuss with you, especially on the topic, how we can foster the trust of the users into the digitized world. Thank you very much.